Some days it don't pay to get out of bed. From all of us here at Retrenchment Television, we'd like to wish you a happy and employed Christmas and look forward to your company again in 1991 on Channel 17. a really mean and nasty guy, a, a, TV, a TV network president. Uh, are TV network presidents all that mean and nasty? Well, take your TV network president, for example, Bosch. What about him? Would you like to hang with him after hours? <laughs> no. And neither would anyone else that's in the room that you're in right now. Mr. Scher said that with hindsight, the Red Cross could have done more to ensure the safety of its blood supply but at the time had to handle the civil liberties of homosexuals with sensitivity. He added that medical experts were not aware of what homosexuals got up to and were shocked when they found out. <laughs> Africa set up, stand by five seconds, four, three, two. For Nelson Mandela, it was a moving reunion with some of the men who went to prison with him all those years ago. Men like Siti Weni Meni Lukukso, Sarah Dupin. <laughs> Come on, please. Pick it up, Pick it up. Pick it up. Um, I'll take it from the top, thank you. <clears throat> Just pick up, Brian? Yeah, take it from the top if you like. Okay. Five seconds. Four, three, two. For Nelson Mandela, it was a moving reunion with some of the men who went to prison with him all those years ago. Men like... <laughs> <coughs> Is it worth pursuing, Jen, or...? Third time lucky. Okay. One more time. <clears throat> we keep rolling in the Zulu Umbalula. Okay, everybody, stand okay. by in five seconds. Four, three, two... For Nelson Mandela, it was a moving reunion with some of the men who went to prison with him all those years ago. Men like Siti Weni Meni Lukukso, Sarah Diffinoz, former leader of the Black Zulu Moslanig movement. One man who could not be... <laughs> I got halfway. Let's pick it up with one man who could not be there. <laughs> okay. Pick up there. Pick up. In five seconds. Four, three, two... One man who could not be there was Onolupringa Bulafai Zingonga. <laughs> Which network hasn't reflected the changing lifestyles of Australians over the past 30 years, but merely become a clone of NBC? Which television network in the past 10 years has gone from number one to a relay station regardless of ratings? Which network features these boring, pathetic, hopeless reruns so it doesn't have to buy new shows? Which network is responsible for cost-cutting to the extent that new equipment never leaves the brochure stage? Which network has made television history by being the first one to be put into receivership and devalued at the rate of $1 million per week over the last three years? Which network reaches out into the homes and hearts of Australians and crams their little minds with 13 minutes of commercials and promos and cuts program to do it? Any idea? Now, if you take a look at this, this is one of our movies tomorrow night, and this one is very special indeed. But we haven't got a poster for it. No. Oh, shit, a brick. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got to do all of that shit again. Oh. This is the 10 Evening News with Eric Walters. Good evening, I'm Eric Walters, and you're not. Ah, to hell with it, I'm not taking this crap. During his six weeks in custody, I'm going to smash some... Fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Melbourne, Melbourne Police, why did I say Melbourne Police? Victorian Police have already been to Sydney to, to fucking interrogate him. Weeks in custody. I've got the fucking shits, I can tell you now, I've got the fucking shits, I'm fucking spewing. Well, you can do it to all animals. You can do it to dogs, cats, horses, cows. 
I personally only do it with dogs and cats. I... <laughs> Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're pausing uh, for, for a few sackings of Channel 10. <laughs> a few more sackings. Mikey, find it! Two chairs, and then we... <laughs> now let's get the weather details and here's Xavier. Hit it. Everybody take a look at me, I got weather personality. It's not a great job, but I have a good time when the girls and me get on the line. Let's look at the max around the state. Up at Marie, they had 38. Sejuna was the lowest with 19. Treat them cruel and keep them keen. Here in Adelaide, the top today, 27.5 at half past eight. The lowest was nine. I'm telling you, for a man like me, that's way too cool. Rip there and shake it. The weather. I'll make it. The satellite got just a mass of clouds, moisture in the north and a band to the south. Moving on, there's a high in the bike. Dry north winds keep us tight. Yeah. Tomorrow the weather is looking cool. If you stay inside, then you're a fool. Cause the high keeps everything looking fine. I'm gonna get stoned with a friend of mine. Yeah. We're gonna light up and blaze away a big mother. Me and Mike 80 and Deuce and Yannick and some of them Channel 10 boys. What's happening in the other states? I don't know, I'm too sedate. But Brisbane, Perth and Hobart too, they're gonna have rain, but that ain't cruel. It's not too late, wanna get out, just look like jail bait Fire restrictions are in place, call the hot land, get up to date On the metro waters, it's much better, you wanna get wet and take it further For Adelaide tomorrow, it's a fresh chill day, we all work hard to make the pay Radio is safe, the television is too, you don't have a script, you don't have news So let's look forward to the next four days, girls and boys, let's all behave That's the weather, it's a rapping tune, keep my man, it's back to you, yeah The firmer you hold her, the more she panics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There so you just are. Just relax for a there second. Get your photos now, because she'll panic and go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to share that. Does it smell? <laughs> yes! This is the environmentally friendly way to get about. And the place in which we're discussing with food growers is to be able to have a system where we can... Uh, uh, what's the word I want? Fuck flying foxes, I've got a can of mine. my cat. You are definitely playing for next year. Well, I've never, uh, never decided to retire, so I can't understand what it's all about. It's just you bunch of fucking cunts keep asking me questions, so I can feed the fucking chooks for your Christmas table all the time. You pack of fucking asses. <laughs> Assured me that I could speak. Sir, sit down inside the car. You're not assuring anything. We're under arrest. Look, I'm under what? Gentlemen, this is democracy manifest. Have a look at the headlock here. See that chap over there? Get your hand off my penis! This is the bloke who got me on the penis before. Get some cups. Why did you do this to me? Pop in the car. Get some cups. For what reason? What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? Oh, that's a nice headlock, sir. Oh, 
yes. I see that you know your judo well. Good one. And you, sir, are you waiting to receive my limp penis? How dare you get your hands on me? Tata and farewell. One cup, look. <laughs> Shut your face. It's 8.35 in wonderful Brisbane City and the weather's looking great. Expected to reach a top of 37 degrees this morning. We've got all the tracks. Well, if you're sitting on the South East Freeway in your car, crank that air conditioning up because we're going to get to 42 degrees today in the lovely city of Brisbane. It's a lovely day in uh, Queensland. The sunshine capital of Australia today. It's a great day for the beaches. Bad day for driving the car. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful day it's going to be here. But not a cloud in the sky, expecting a top of 38 degrees. It's gonna be a hot one, folks. One of the most abusive creatures in the whole bush is this nasty little bastard, the orangutan. You listen to what he's got to say when you pick him up out of a tree. Fucking jerk. See? Isn't that disgusting? Eat shit. What? Fuck you. You're an asshole. I've never heard anything so disgusting in all my life, little bastard. Fucking jerk. Who wants a beer? You're burning it. You're burning it. You're raw. You're not cooking him. Because all you can smile like a big and fat and juicy. Good job for that. I might say raw. Good job for the girls, eh, son? Yeah. Oh, Looks like we found another use for these cars, eh? Ah, yeah. oh, that bell. <laughs> Come on, Scruffy, this is how you get in the national television. Who is it? <laughs> Come on, Scruffy. <laughs> Get me Thank you for making me welcome on the show, by the way. <laughs> I've never been welcomed like that before. Telly Club, it's the best <laughs> fucking show in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, get out of it. Go on, get it over and done with. <laughs> go on. I just did it. I hate these checks. I've done it. That's it. No, go on. It's over. No. Go on, put it up me blurder. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. This is embarrassing. No. Go on, if you go no, put up me blurder, put up me blurder. I've done it. I've done it. How far do you want it up? <laughs> Koalas are so finicky that they actually smell each leaf before they're prepared to eat it. So with the plantation harvest three years in the making, their keepers have been eagerly awaiting their reaction. <laughs> they weren't even bears. There was a big, you see the white one? That couldn't have been a bear. That's a suit. And that big brown one, that's a bear. And, and if that was a real bear, then that's the reason why you always stand around the front end of the bear. We just brought a plane into the luggage van. Shit! And now it's night time. Fucking hell. And the plane's back. And there's, there's arms. And this is all bullshit. We're ripping the kids off. This is crap. I'm not in Los Angeles. What a load of shit. <laughs>
Channel 9 wishes you and your family... Family Feud with the star of our show, hey ho ha he, here he is, Daryl Summers! Just kneel down when you talk to me, would you, Gary? <laughs> While you're down there. Now listen, no, we'll go again, thank you. All right, you've given me an answer, and I think they're all locked in, just about, and we'll turn and face the board. You don't have to go back now, no, we're going to check the answer, just move in towards me, if you would. And uh, bump the microphone if you like. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take my trousers off. And, um, and we'll all get into it, oh, I'm sorry, Dale. No, you can't take your trousers off. It's a oh, is that round show. four, is it? Have you, how do you feel? Nervous? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. do? Yeah. You um, still doing the allocution lessons, I see. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful yeah. for you. You could take home these wonderful prizes. Yeah, John thank Blackman. you, Daryl and uh, Mr. Sack. This terrible microwave oven with terrible cooking features and a dishwasher which will break all your plates, hands and time. Two very, uh, well, you know, reasonable appliances from National Panasonic. And this buffet and hutch with its colonial design will add warmth to any of this money. She roots like a rattlesnake with its superior craftsmanship and practical features, containing substantial space for those valuable ornaments from CRO Furniture. Well, there we go. I bet you, are you quite excited? Uh, oh, is that all I get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, settle down there, suck. Now, don't add leave me a little <laughs> prick. It's, uh, uh, we haven't doubled the questions. We still have five questions for you. You have 15 seconds in which to answer them. Your time starts at the end of the first question. Well, if you have a, no, if you, if you have any trouble with them, say pass, and I'll go back to it if time permits. Stop okay. your fly. If you, no, if you fart, you're disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 15 seconds on the clock, and away we go. Name an occupation that requires wanking. Pass. Right. A famous poofter. Pass. And the first one, name an occupation that requires wanking. You said prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Survey said... <laughs> 69. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that worked out, didn't it? 69. That's a great score for a prostitute <laughs> in, in one evening. Right. Um, second, a uh, famous poofter. You said the <laughs> List Brothers. <laughs> Survey said... <laughs> Wendy for the List Brothers. We'll wipe the board clear. Over there, if you would, uh, Adam Suck. And out comes Ivor. <laughs> Ivor Suck. Good music in the cans? Yes. Yes, we've doubled it twice as fast now, you know. Yes. We'll just move in a bit closer. Uh, same five questions for you. You have a little extra time. Your time starts at the end of the first question. If you say fuck, you're disqualified. And here we go, 20 seconds on the clock. <coughs> Name an occupation that requires wanking. Working here. Right, a famous poofter. A food with an edible foreskin. Leslie's cooking. <laughs> Leslie's cooking. We got that computer good. And something people do very noisily. Fart. Right, well done. I think you got them in before the buzzer. Did we get the fart in before the buzzer? We did, yes. We got your last answer in. So I think it's locked into the computer. I'm getting the thumbs up. Uh, would you take your thumb out, please, John? Our contestants receive Tomaine Red Tulip Chocolates. Plastic homewares from the Latin Industries, a beautiful vibrator from Selangor, a mixed selection of RCA records, and a champagne dinner for two at Nero. Spittle with a knight at the gentle touch to follow. Family Feud uses Grace Brothers, our cast and crew fly Ansett. Daryl is dressed by his mother. Daryl shoes by Aquila, hair styling by Jamie Dyke Salons. Uh, models are dressed by Black Obvious Boutique, and they bang like Dunny Doors in a Gale. Director Terry Higgins goes down on anything. Producer Paul Waterhouse goes up on anything. Executive Andrew Brook wanks. Charge of production Bill Mason, wonderful guy. Family Feud is a Grundy organisation steal recorded for the National Nine Network. I have nothing to do with this programme. Philip Brady speaking. You're listening, Reg. Sir Kerry. Hi there. You know, Peter Smith really is a meanie. He's been waving the Safeway Christmas catalogue at you, telling it's you that... Oh, poop. <laughs> I'll take a wine from Peter Pan, but not Dennis Rawati. Why not? Why not? <laughs> the seven-day holiday to the day. Fly Air New Zealand's Bird of Paradise. Aye, aye. Once up three, once camera three. Aye, aye. This means nothing to you at home, but it is it is very funny. You ever see Peter Thayman and him in a conversation? No. I'm facing, I'm facing. What do you mean? <laughs> and we won't mention who, but then all of a sudden the third director comes in the scene. Hello, what's happening? No, no, no. You're all so very kind. On our next show, we're joined by English actor and funny man, the outrageous Jimmy Edwards. Also, we're going to talk with this country's newest TV cult figure from North Melbourne and the Foot Discray, 
Frango Cozzo will be talking with us. Plus, Kevin Arnett will take us into one of our notes. And we also have a quick look. I'm sorry. And look, just before we start, can we stop? Sorry. I don't want to hear any more about Gary, okay? I don't want to hear another word. He's the only director who takes the trouble to bring young fellas in for work experience. Now, I don't want any more nonsense. <laughs> I got the poor queen must be so confused. <laughs> Why are you on sick? I, I still get pains in my left shoulder and my left leg and sort of pins and needles feeling in my left hand, numb, you know. But to tell you the real truth, sir, She likes you, Larry. Oh, what I've always dreamed about, like coming home to a hero. Oh, don't you get too many big ideas, Buster. <sighs> oh, shit, no, I'm asleep. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> Masochistic. Did you? Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. Do it again. Do it again. Yes, Make I... my father lie. Mm. Oh. Love it. Is that all right? You would. Is that all right? Yeah. You're right, Rickens. I'm really good. Rickens, I'm the best assistant he's ever had. And he says he's gonna. Shit. You know what? You reckon he'll only have to cut a few feet of film off the. You reckon you don't have to cut? Ah, oh, fuck. I've got another bloke to stand in for me. He's really glad to have the opportunity to do it, too, because I can't remember what I say next. It's all right. I've got another bloke to stand in for me. He's glad to have the... He's glad to do it. OK. You mean to say you just went? Jeff! Well, it's all right. Oh, sorry. Well, it's all right. I've got another bloke to do it. Sorry, I forgot the beat. It's all right. I've got another bloke to stand in. It's all... Fuck. It's time. It's all right. I got another bloke to stand into me. He was glad to do it anyway. So Jim had someone there to collect the... Who the fuck did that? What? And a newsflash from the promotions department. The National Nine Network has just announced their 1982 theme is We're Still the One. Seven has We'd Like to Be the One. Ten is using We'll Never Be the One. And the ABC says Who Gives a Fuck Anyway? Really? Coast to coast on the National Nine Network. Welcome to New Faces with your host, Bert Newton. We've got a good show, I believe, this evening for you. Thanks for, for choosing us. We'll get down to, to Act One. <laughs> I had the shop in Italy, but I just couldn't stay. That's terrible, aren't they? Everybody bastards. wanted the furniture, ain't nobody wanted They're really to pay. Bunch. They're all your friends. So I come to Northern Melbourne, and the people used to say, Hey, Franco Cozzo, come down to Butters Clay. Hey, Franco Cozzo drives a lots of people crazy. I just can't even see Always on the television. <laughs> Thanks, Tout. <laughs> Here is our chief judge. Here's Tim. I mean, I thought it was terrific, and I gave you 42. 42! <laughs> That's a pretty high score for Timothy there. How's the rash? Is it clearing up? <laughs> <laughs> Here on behalf of Safeway is somebody who has won nothing on consecutive years. Here's Peter Smith. This week, family-packed navel oranges in three-kilogram bags are only $1.39. You'll find Red Spot specials right through every department of your friendly Safeway supermarket. What put me off is the fact that nobody repositioned for the oranges, you know? That slightly put me off. I was going to keep going, but I thought, no, why should I take it while I'm on the shelves? Clatch or catch a cluster of Canada Dry. The four packs of Canada Dry mixes. Oh, shut up. If you just used the laugh, we could have kept going. Sale of the century. 
now the star of our show, Tony Baba. Thanks very much, Pete Smith. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sale of the Century. What a great week. This is Michael, everyone. Hi, Michael. It's good to see My you. My friend, Don Lane's friend. We'll have to do it again. Daryl Summers' friend. We'll do it again. Everybody's friend. We'll have to do it again. Thank you. Grant, you have $25. A correct pick will put you up $5 off the pace. Whose face would you like? Sophia Loren. Sophia Loren. Money. Beauty, mate. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Settle down, Vic. And this is me band. Hey, Vic, you're not on. You're not on the restless years now, love. <laughs> Cut it out. Just came out. Geez, you're a good ad libber. <laughs> Just as well you didn't take it any further, Vic. I'm sorry. It would have been really in the new. Which important church office is common to St. Augustine, Thomas Cranmer, and Dr. Cuns, or Dr. Cuns, or Dr. Cuns, or Dr. Runcie? Laurel. Archbishop of Canterbury. Maybe a doctor out there who could tell me what's wrong with it. Um, you I had that happen once before, didn't you? You had this great, terrible thing on you, and the doctor oh. rang and said, get it off, quick! Yeah. <laughs> and she went home. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, here is a 10. And here's another 10. As you can see, the Life Be In It campaign hasn't done nearly as much for Mr. Hamer as it has for Bo Derrick. Tonight, we're paying tribute to the newest member of the 10 Club, Dick Hamer. I'm Ray Smartin, and I'm amazed. I'm George Fungus, and I'm astonished. I'm Ian Leisurely, and I'm leaving. Hello there. I'm George Fungus, and I'm going to show you a report tonight that took me weeks to compile. I travelled all over the city to many different locations to put to the Premier, Mr Hamer, several provocative questions. Mr Premier, on the subject of massage parlours, how many politicians actually attend massage parlours? Uh, we don't usually uh, divulge numbers. In fact, we don't even count them. Well, Mr Premier, let me put it another way. Are some girls better than others? So far as we can tell, the, the preferences seem to vary from booth to booth quite a bit. There have been reports suggesting that quite a few men are dressing up as massage parlour girls. What have you got to say about this? There's some question mark about one or two of them. Would you be prepared to tell us how many politicians have never returned from a visit to a massage parlour? Uh, lost, I would say uh, seven. Um, but, uh... Would you be prepared to name them? I can't answer that. Well, Mr Premier, do you have a message for the men of Victoria concerning our massage parlour girls? Please help them when they call on you on Saturday and Sunday. I would like to remind everybody, I believe that responsibility... Oh, Christ, I was going well, too. ...increased and, uh side to do that. Oh, I'd better have to watch that. No, oh, that's no bloody good. I'm waffling. Put one straight off. By God, the poor queen must be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold it. I'm sick of this. Every year the same old thing. Plenty of tits and bums for the boys. How about something for the girls? And Crystal. Go away, go on. 